So the start of chapter two, um, obviously you, you may have realized we've already done chapters three and chapters four, and essentially those were the algebra chapters, and now we've got those out of the way, and as you know, they're really tough. Chapter two is actually going to be a nice break for you, quite easy, it's going to take us about a week to get through, and there is no test, um, just your assignment. So uh, in today's note, uh, you won't even need a calculator or even any mental math, it's just uh, information. So basically, the assignment around today is uh, about making a hypothesis and telling the difference between primary and secondary data. So, um, as you can see, I just want you to get copying away. <coughs> Excuse me. But a hypothesis is just a guess about a situation before you test it. And uh, it doesn't have to be correct. So by testing, of course, this is sounding a lot like science, which is good for me because I like science. Um, but it doesn't have to be something scientific. Um, you could guess that, um, you know, often I'll make a guess about, a guess about, say you want to guess somebody's age. That would be your hypothesis. My hypothesis is that Charlie is two years old. Um, it doesn't have to be correct. And the test could be just uh, asking his owner, like me, how old he is. Okay? And he's not two, he's four. Uh, but he looks young for his age and he acts young too. So that's what hypothesis is, and it doesn't have to be correct, and it doesn't have to be science. So when you're thinking hypothesis, I make hypothesis all the time, and I use the term, I think, because I have a science background. Um, statistics is numerical data, and so generally, especially in this class and in this unit, uh, we're going to analyze data to support, and we'll find out if it supports a hypothesis or it doesn't support a hypothesis. So Charlie's age is an easy one, but sometimes you have to do a lot more data than just uh, one question. Uh, another example might be, I think that the average height of a Northwestern student is five foot six, right? That might be my hypothesis. And then the test will be collecting numerical data, which is asking every student how tall they are. Uh, a year ago, last year when I was actually in a grade 12 class, um, I was talking about the idea that there's, a, there's actually a, it's a, sort of a hypothesis, no, it's not a hypothesis, it's actually a proven fact that if you get enough people to guess something, they will actually, the average of all the guesses will be correct. And so uh, to test that with my students, we got the entire student population to guess Mr. Ritzma's age. So we, t and then we collected all the data, we went to every single class, got every kid to guess Mr. Ritzma's age, and, and then um, we figured out the average of all the guesses, and uh, to see if it's correct, because like I say, the, the, the mathematical premise is that it will be. And that's, of course, without a skew in the data. And there was a skew in the data that I'm not going to tell you about in the video, but I will tell you in class if you ask me. Okay, next. Um, so we're going to talk about hypothesis again. So write a hypothesis for the following question. Do students who watch Duck Dynasty have higher marks, lower marks, or the same marks as students who do not watch Duck, Duck Dynasty? And, you know, you can write your own hypothesis, uh, whether, I guess it probably depends on whether you watch it, which I don't. But a student who watches Duck Dynasty would have lower marks, is my hypothesis. And why, you ask? Well, I would just argue that a student who spends time watching TV would be time not doing math homework, so they must uh, have a lower mark. Okay, um, hypothesis in its opposite. It's obviously in the case of, uh, there's only two options. So... So the question is, and there's one, I mean, basically you have homework questions just like this. So write a hypothesis about a relationship between the variables in each pair, then give the opposite. So the variables um, are what we're interested in measuring, and that's hours practicing math problems, and then grade 9 English mark. So these are sort of two, this is a pair of variables, right? And, you know, the hypothesis might be a student who practices more math problems will have a lower mark. And then the opposite would be a student who practices more math will have a higher mark. It's as simple as that. That's a hypothesis and opposite. Okay, uh, sources of data. Uh, essentially, there's uh, two types of data. It's either primary or secondary, and I, I explain what they are below. A primary source of data is running some experiment. Uh, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking science when I say that, or just collecting your own data. So, for example, when we checked Mr. Ritzma's age, that was primary data because we went around and we asked people and actually got um, people's. We got people to give us 
numbers. And so that was primary data because we collected that information. A secondary source might be, uh, it wouldn't really work for Ritzma's age, but would be looking something up on the internet. You know, look it up and find out data that someone else collected. Okay, it might not even been through for the same reason, but someone else, um, you know, uh, might be that I want to know the average age. Oh, here's a good one, like something about the uh, NHL. So maybe what's the average or number of goals scored by a defenseman in the NHL? Well, you know, the easiest way to get that would probably be to go on one of the sites and you could find the data on the internet. Right? And that would be a secondary source of data because I'm not asking, the, I'm not going up to the players myself and asking them how many goals they scored. Um, I'm looking it up, right? And that's basically it. Secondary is looking it up. Primary is collecting the data yourself. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's it for today. So if you have any questions, please fill it in here. Otherwise, that's today's note. Easy peasy.